So right here I have a iRobot Roomba 400 Discovery Series that I got from Craigslist for only like 10 bucks. So the only catch about this Roomba is because it's so old, the battery the battery's not good anymore. It only lasts about five minutes with its stock battery. The old battery it uses is the nickel cadmium batteries. However, I did see some models use um, the nickel magnesium hydride batteries. So over time, these batteries have something called a memory effect. So say if you discharge this down to only 40% over the, and then you leave it in storage for like six months, the battery's gonna remember that, oh hey, this is the limit. So next time you charge it to uh, what 100%, it only uses 80% of its capacity. So when I first got these batteries, what I did was try to revive them. What I did to revive them is I put a surge of electricity through them. So I had a bunch of um, uh, lithium polymer batteries that I had laying around, and I connect them in series, and I surge the surge the voltage through these uh, terminals here, and that may work for a few weeks. However, after a while you're gonna get the same effect again and it's really, really annoying. So the stock batteries that the old Siri has comes with, again, nickel magnesium hydride and nickel cadmium and those batteries suck. So what I did was um, I decided to put a lithium polymer battery. So these are the same batteries I use for my um, drone racing. However, uh, I had one for my old Phantom 1 and I combined them together to make a four cell so what's the catch with these batteries versus nickel cadmium batteries? Okay, well, these batteries aren't as resilient as nickel cadmium batteries. Think of these as like car batteries, you know? You can do whatever you want to car batteries and so you'll always find some way to revive car batteries. But for these ones, you gotta be a little more careful. You treat them the same as lithium ion batteries. So for these one here, what I did was simply, um, I took out the batteries from the original shell and I soldered on a old XT60 connector. So positive and then negative here, all right? So what I did was I made sure it fit and I connect the terminals together. However, because this is a 4S battery, there's four individual cells inside here. I, I got an example here of what it looks like on the inside. This is a different battery, it's from something else. Um, but this is only a three cell versus a four cell. But you can see there's three different um, cells inside to make that 4S battery. Unlike the nickel uh, cadmium batteries, all of them were pre-balanced before they were put in series. So when you charge it, you're not charging individual batteries, you're charging all the cells at once. Over time with lithium pollen batteries, each of the cells might have their own resistance, um, different in value. But that resistance will not be the same for each and every cell. So for example, this has a resistance of 80% versus this has only a resistance of 20%. So these two, this top battery will charge much faster than this one. But if you just charge it through the terminal and you don't balance through each indi individual cells, you're gonna give this cell more power than this one and that's very very dangerous so what I did was on the Roomba battery okay first I make sure it fit and secondly I installed a buzzer so this buzzer here you can buy on eBay for like two bucks and it is really really loud like listen to this okay well doesn't sound as loud on the camera but what I do is I set a voltage limit so I set it down to 3.7 because usually when the uh, when the Roomba is on, it draws a lot of amperage and the voltage sags a little bit. So I compensate that with 3.7. Usually for LiPo batteries, you don't want to go below 3.8. Alright? Alright, so this is going to be straightforward. So all I do is simply connect the XT60. And I kind of like put it to the side here. And squish. Oh, don't forget the terminal. I mean, sorry, the balance lead. Push that down. Push that down and I just simply plug in the buzzer. So now that I have it installed in here, I just simply plug it in. So plug it in and then I usually have, okay, so I lost the cover for this guy. I'm probably gonna take off this cover and just slap it on there. So for the meantime, what I've been doing is I just simply put a cardboard paper on top and just tape it down. I know it's very DIY, but I was planning to use this cover instead.
So what inspired me to do this little hack was simply I was on Craigslist and I saw Roombas being sold for only like $20 or $30 but all of them had problems and all of them were pointing towards the battery. So I did some research and all you gotta do is install new batteries. Like this still runs as good as the newer models. It just doesn't have like the fancy features like Wi-Fi or like, um, okay, well surprisingly it has um, home docking, which is pretty cool, but I don't have, you can't use a dock when you use my method because they're two different type of batteries. Well, anyways, I hope this inspires you to check out your Craigslist area to see if anybody's selling a cheap Roomba, you can hack it up.